Hi, I'm Jason. This video is on asymmetric information and the curse of knowledge. We saw earlier in our examination of the market for lemons and the winner's curse that asymmetric information can cause market failures even if agents are fully rational. However, the rational agents account for the information and behavior of others, and as a result, behave optimally despite that market imperfection. There is substantial empirical evidence that people do not behave in this way. For example, people tend to underestimate the extent to which informational differences drive others' behavior. They often act as if others have the same information set that they do. Where an agent has information that another doesn't, this phenomenon is known as the curse of knowledge. Further, better informed agents often fail to take advantage of their informational advantage against less informed agents because they don't understand the link between information and behavior. The idea behind the curse of knowledge is that better informed agents should ignore the additional information they hold when predicting the actions of less informed agents. Experimental evidence shows that people are unable to ignore their private information, even when it is in their interest to do so. For example, Newton had students participate in an experiment in one of two roles, tapper and listener. Tappers received a list of 25 well-known songs and were asked to tap out the rhythm of one of the songs. Listeners tried to identify the song based solely on the taps. Tappers predicted that listeners would identify 50% of the songs. Listeners only identified three of 120 songs correctly, a rate of about 2.5%. While that experiment involved agents who had more information than the other players, they knew the song. We also see failures where the other player has additional information, but the agent does not account for that fact. We can explore this idea in the market for lemons. Recall our earlier example in our video on asymmetric information involving the purchase of a used car. There are two types of cars, good cars and lemons, and only the seller knows the type. The buyer knows that the seller has this information. A car is good with probability Q and a lemon with probability one minus Q. To the seller, good cars are worth $10,000 and lemons $5,000. To potential buyers, good cars are worth $15,000 and lemons $7,500. A cursed buyer doesn't think that the seller's decision whether to trade depends on the seller's knowledge of the car. Suppose that Q equals 0.2. That is, only 20% of the cars are good. Suppose the cursed buyer believes that all cars are sold with equal probability regardless of type. In that case, the expected value of a car to a buyer is 0 0.2 times 15,000 plus 0.8 times 7,500, which equals 9,000. A buyer would be willing to pay up to $9,000 for a car. At that price, however, the seller of a good car would not be willing to sell. The market will comprise only lemons which sellers are more than happy to sell. The buyer will pay $9,000 for a car worth only $7,500 to them. We can also explore this phenomenon in the winner's curse. Recall our example on the winner's curse in the video on asymmetric information regarding bidding for an oil field. Company one and company two hire a geologist to estimate the value of an oil field. The honest geologist of each company privately reports their estimated valuation to the company. Company one learns V1 and company two learns V2. V1 and V2 are uniformly distributed between zero and 100 and independent. Assume the true value of the oil field is the mean of V1 and V2. That is capital V equals V1 plus V2 on two. The two companies simultaneously bid for the field in a first price auction. The highest bid wins and pay their bid, pays their bid. Assume company one is cursed and therefore assumes that company two's bid is independent of V2. Assume company one assumes V2 was on average $50 and that company two bids half of the time regardless of V2. Company one's expected profit, if they bid V1, is as follows. The expected profit equals a half times the profit if company two doesn't bid, plus a half times the two scenarios where company two does bid, where company one loses and company two wins. That in turn equals a half times 
brackets V1 plus 50 on two minus V1. That is the profit they get if they win if company two doesn't bid. Plus a quarter times zero. That is their profit if they lose the auction, of course, where of course they pay nothing. Plus a quarter times V1 plus 50 on two minus V1. That being the profit they get if they win when company two bids. And that all equals three quarters times brackets 25 minus V1 on two close brackets. We can see the expected profit if they bid V1, or at least their belief as the profit is greater than zero, if V1 is greater than 50, if their private valuation is greater than 50. However, as we showed in the previous video, this bidding approach leads to, on average, a loss. Company one underappreciates that company two is more likely than not, more likely not to bid when company two's information is bad. Therefore, company one underappreciates the extent to which winning the auction is bad news.